Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Ann Richmond, a.k.a. Heart Singer, the head bard in charge around these parts. And this is my channel, my channel where I talk about all things TTRPGs. And there's lots of things that people love about tabletop role-playing games. Some people love the combat. Some people love puzzles or political intrigue. And then there are those for whom the light leaves their eyes when they hear the phrase, roll for initiative. Why is that? I think it's the combat can be long. It can get into so much nitty gritty looking up of rules. There are a lot of people, a lot of opinions, sometimes high stakes that make you feel aggressive or just frustrated. And if you're one of those people who does struggle with combat, I don't think you're alone. This video is for you. And it's also for anybody who just wants to make combat a little bit more fun at the table. Now there's one thing that you can do before you get to the table that will make your time at the table a lot more fun and smooth. And it sounds very boring, but review your rules. Players, if it's been more than a week, even if it's only been a week, sit down for 10 minutes before the game starts, either while everybody is arriving or um, if you're taking a cab there or the subway or not if you're driving, that would be insane and very, very dangerous, but find, find 10 minutes. Everybody has 10 minutes for something, even five, just to look through what spells you have, what special class abilities you have available to you. Reminding yourself means that you don't have to stop the game dead in its tracks every single time it comes to casting a spell and wondering if it has a saving throw or forgetting where you can find your spell save DC. You're familiar, you have a passing familiar with your character sheet and you'd be surprised sometimes I go over my character sheet and go wow I can do that why don't I do that like all the time let's face it dungeon masters have a lot of responsibility so it's sort of our job to help them by being responsible for what we can know and to that end Dungeon Masters, this one's for you. You know, there's a lot that we have to prepare for the game. We have maps, we have character backstories that we want to weave into a particular session. I mean, there's tons of things to think about, but if you have combat prepared, it's really, really important that you take time to review those characters' abilities and how they work. And when you are more familiar with their legendary actions, with the way that they can combine different abilities that they have to create sticky situations for the players, you'll be better at creating a more challenging and more fun encounter. This next tip really helps bring more flow to combat and keep everyone focused on what they need to be at a particular time. And it's really hard. And yet it's so simple. Shut up when it's not your turn. It's so hard because so many of us who have played for a long time, we see someone struggling or we have an idea and you just want to express it. But it's so, so important that everyone have their own agency at the table and that we all trust the dungeon master to sort of arbitrate and lead people through their turns. And keep in mind how that can make new players feel. Sometimes those newer players are the ones who like combat least because that's where their agency is taken away from them by the rest of the table, either the dungeon master or the other players trying to help them. Let their turn be their turn. It needs to feel exciting. They need to understand the stakes of what they're choosing and whether or not things work. And that's so much easier for people to have when they don't have tons of people talking over them or trying to tell them how they can do something really cool. Storytelling doesn't have to die when the DM calls to roll for initiative. It's important that you know you can be descriptive in not just what you're doing, but how you're doing it. When you bring more attention to how your character is performing their acts of thrilling heroics, well, it breaks down that binary between this strictly mechanical part of the game and the quote unquote storytelling part of the game. That doesn't really have to exist. And if you start thinking about what your fighting style is, how your spells are summoned, it brings a lot more flavor to your character. I once had a warlock who was inspired by Waterworld and I know everybody hates that movie, but I don't care. I think it's really fun. I like the world building, okay? 
I flavored that character's Eldritch Blast as being a giant white spectral shark that would ram into her enemies. My Technomancer in Starfinder had this runic tattoo, and I would always say, and then my runes light up. It became kind of a weird catchphrase at the table. And then my runes light up. Guys, wait. So what happens is her runes light up. Whatever her runes lit up, I would create these sort of arcane pixels because this is a futuristic setting and they would then create whatever the element was that I was summoning, be it fire or pixels creating armor all over my body. And that was a really cool flavor that I hadn't experienced yet in the game. It kept the class new for me. I know I've only talked about spellcasters, but you can do the same thing for martial classes and it's equally awesome, especially for monks. Oh my goodness. I had this uh, changeling shadow monk in Eberron and chatting with my dungeon master about what was all around me in the environment so I could sort of use it like Jackie Chan to flavor all of my pop pops and my flurry of blows. Like it was so cool. You Once you start imagining that you're creating punches, not just with your fist, but with other parts of your body, you can go wild with how you are moving around the battlefield. And it really made my character have character in battle. Can't recommend it more. The one caveat to being more descriptive is to be aware of the fact that sometimes if you go overboard with your descriptions, it takes time and focus away from other people. So if you're someone like me who can be <clears throat> verbose, think about keeping it to moments where you've criticaled or you've gotten a killing blow. But overall, just be aware of how long combat has been going on and how much space you're taking up. Most people are gonna have a lot of fun and uh, react to the feedback of you doing something cool to them, you know, combo attacking off of that when they're next in initiative. But sometimes it can be just adding more noise. So be aware. And to that end, as dungeon masters, it's our job to think about the environment. Think about rope bridges or falling rocks or thunderstorms or different types of creatures we can put our players up against that have new abilities that force them to look at their own action economy and abilities in different ways. When it's just group of heroes versus bunch of goons all hitting with, you know, sword attacks or multi attacks every time, yeah, they can do a lot of damage at low levels and take people down to zero fast, but it's not as fun when you don't have to think around sort of the puzzle of a battlefield. Especially when you're playing theater of the mind style combat, it's totally okay for players, to, in my mind, to ask the DM to explore the environment with them. Is there maybe a loose flagstone you could pick up and hurl? Or is there a wall you could climb or a table you could jump up on? I mean, what's the worst that happens? They tell you no and you find a new and interesting way to be a badass? So consider that when you're building things, even if you're going on the fly, give them less space to work in or give them, you know, a pond to work around or difficult terrain or trees. Think upward. Don't just think looking top down at a map. Think about how you would imagine that space in three dimensions. And often you'll be able to describe elements that players will pick up on and say, I think it's time that I want to swing from the chandelier from the chandelier I want to roll dice like my spell will persist like my spell will persist I have one last piece of bardic wisdom to impart to you put your damn phone down okay a lot of people bring a lot of technology to the table. There's so many awesome tools from virtual tabletops to D&D Beyond and Hero Lab. There are a lot of reasons to have your iPad or your phone on the table and have it be totally kosher. And I'm definitely not against those things. What I really mean is to make sure that you have your notifications off or that you know you can ignore them. It's so frustratingly easy for these little things, these notifications to pull you away, to try and quickly answer a message somebody sent you on Facebook or, you know, read a Twitter notification that came through or see a news post flash across your screen about a new movie you're super excited about or news that's happening in the world. Like all of these things pull you back to reality. Whoops, there goes gravity. <laughs> 
<laughs> but what they really do is keep you from this active investment that everybody has come to the table to make in fantasy, in escaping all of those pressures. We have so few opportunities to be, I'm getting like a little emotional about this, but like exactly where we are, especially with our friends. And especially given that when this video is made, we've been in the midst of a panorama for a really long time and we're starting to come out of it and people are gonna be playing in person with each other. Like for once, be present. Sometimes that once a week is like the one time you get to connect with other people. And if this past, you know, year and a half has taught us anything, it's how important that can be. So honor it. I can confirm as the dungeon master that when I see people, you know, on their phones, not looking at character sheets or like laughing and talking about something and sharing it with somebody else whose turn it isn't in combat, like all of those little things build up. They may seem like nothing, like you're being quiet and respectful, but the visual language of looking at your table and not having everybody excited about what's going on, you know, that tells me that I'm not good enough. I mean, that's probably me being too harsh, but that tells me that my story isn't interesting. That tells me that you don't really care. And everyone has put so much effort into just making the time to be there. And the dungeon masters put so much effort into creating the story. It's, it's just so important to make sure that you're there for it. And if you are somebody who struggles with that, who struggles to like be there every moment, that's okay. You are definitely not alone. It's about making the active effort to pursue that perfection. If you don't make it all the way, it's okay. But definitely think about it. Be aware of how it looks to everybody else at the table and how when one person picks up their phone, another person thinks it's okay to pick up theirs and kind of dick around. And one way that helps me to combat that urge because I absolutely struggle with it as a player is I try to think actively in the moment what my next turn is going to be. So even if it changes, I'm always thinking, okay, well, I thought I was gonna be able to cast Fireball, but now these people are all clumped up. Now I can't do that. What could I do instead? Or, oh, that guy's coming over here. I really wanna make distance between us because as a caster, that's gonna be really bad news if I end up in melee. Like all of those things, you know, Yes, things are going to change on the battlefield as they go, but if you are invested and excited about the turns other people are taking, even if you're not vocally participating in those turns, it can really help you stay focused on what's happening and be part of that like mindful escape as a unit. And that's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have other ways that help everyone at the table stay more invested in combat and creating more streamlined experience from the more role play focused part of the game to the uh, role for initiative part of the game, please put them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, obviously please give it a like and subscribe. I know you hear that from every YouTuber, but it's because it really helps to make sure that YouTube knows that people want to see what we have to say. So please take the time to do that. I can promise there's new content here on this channel every single week, both here with short format videos and with longer format videos coming over from my Twitch where I also have, you know, uh, panel conversations with people about different elements of role-playing games and different systems. So I think you'll really, really enjoy that. And if you want to come hang out live for those longer format tabletop RPG conversations, I do streams on Thursdays and Fridays at twitch.tv slash Hearth Singer Games at 6 p.m. Eastern. And Thursday streams are awesome because they are sponsored by my friends at Eldritch Foundry. We give away a free miniature every single week and we build new characters in their character creators. So come hang out. And in the meantime, guys, get out there and live your quest life. Bye! My turn all alone at the table when I feel so much pressure that I just want to die. Let me role play with per persuasion and deception rolls too. So the bard life can begin. Okay, see you next week.